Welcome to our act of worship this morning on the 28th of June in the benefice of St Aldelm. Behind the scenes, a good number of us, Church Wardens Plus, have been working on uh, the complexity of beginning to open the church up. And there are all sorts of problems, um, as illustrated in this slide, that are potentially facing us. Um, we'll say more about what the, uh, what the ideas and plans are in the notices at the end of the service. We'll continue now with our bells, which will be followed by um, our organ voluntary, then our hymn, and then over to Pauline and Michael in conversation with Nick and Naomi. And then we'll hand over to Jane, who will lead us through the service.
really, really pleased to be introducing um, Nick and Naomi, and I don't know if they're there, Ronan, Micah and Luke. Yeah. But um, it's an exciting day for your family. It's a very exciting day for Nick. And um, I think it's exciting for us too. We, as, as Nick gets commissioned later on today at 3 p.m. as a licensed lay minister, and um, Nick is joining the St Oldham Benefice as a curate. And I think we all look forward to getting to know the whole family. And, you know, hopefully this lockdown thing will um, end enough that we can all meet together in person. But um, we really welcome you into our fellowship. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. We're, uh, we're really looking forward to it. It's, uh, we've got Luke here with us. He's our youngest. Yeah. He's one. The other two are watching TV in the other room. It's, uh, it's probably for the best. Probably for the best, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with, um, with you telling us something about yourselves and what brought you all to Swanage in the Purbeck area? Well, I, I think it was probably back in 2003 that I first moved to Swanage to take up the post as youth minister for the uh, Anglican Church team in Swanage. Uh, which Nick will remember because he was the, the treasurer, I think, at that point. And, um, and I did that for about seven years. And during that stage, May and I got married. And uh, it was when I, I finished that point and started my own gardening business that the children started to steadily arrive and add years onto our lives. <laughs> 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 But, that's, uh, but we haven't moved out of Swanage at all during that time. So I sort of feel like we've really grown to, to love the community. Uh, in the early days, you want to sort of escape fairly regularly. But there's something about uh, the area that, that sort of gets under your skin and uh, you grow to love it. And I, it reaches a point now where I wonder when the last time was that I left Purbeck. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And, and so can you share a little with us about your Christian background and you've touched on it, but the journey which has led you, um, particularly now, to St George's um, Church? Um, yeah, so my background uh, is, I grew up uh, in Surrey and um, my, my dad's a, or was a Baptist pastor and um, so I grew up in the Baptist Church. Um, my mum, uh, my mum grew up a Methodist and then married a Baptist, and uh, now I, I married an Anglican. So we're doing the rounds, <laughs> yes. um, and uh, yeah. So I, I've, you know, I grew up in a church family. So I, it, it's yeah. It's taken, well, there's, there's been all kinds of adjustments because we've been to all sorts of different styles of of church worship over the years, and uh, uh, sort of. Uh, I think um, it was during, during the point when I was doing the youth ministry that I, I felt a call to, to ordination, but uh, we sort of put that off for a while because the, the, uh, the idea of doing it as a self-supporting minister didn't really come up. And uh, it was actually many years later when I was involved in an Alpha course that um, someone said to me, have you thought about following a call to ordination as a self-supporting minister. And things sort of clicked in place at that point. And um, I sort of, it, it's, it's not, a, not a quick journey following that call. I think um, the Church of England doesn't tend to do things quickly. If anything, this lockdown period, things have happened much faster than they've happened for many years. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's, it, I was delighted last year to be offered the chance to do a curacy uh, together with, with you all here in, uh, here in Purbeck Hills and uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Good, that's, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. You, you must be um, one of the few people on screen who have been or still are doing homeschooling. So uh, uh, <laughs> would you like to share a bit of that and, and how you're getting on with lockdown? Um, well, uh, Nick's continued to work full time um, with the gardening business, um, as well as completing his studies. So, um, so the homeschooling's been down to me. And um, at first, it was um, a bit overwhelming, and um, there were tears from everybody uh, because with the two 
so two, two out of the three boys are school age, but they're both in different key stages. So uh, as I know, lots of other parents in similar situations have found that's quite, that's quite difficult to, um, to homeschool two different age children. And then obviously looking after the toddler at the same time is that in itself sometimes feels like a full time job. So um, it's been, you know, it's been intense, I think we would say. But I have to say it's, you know, we've, we're doing all right, aren't we? We've got there. Yeah. And I feel quite I feel quite proud of the children for what they've achieved. And um, we, we I will look back on it. Um, realistically, knowing it was challenging, but very fondly. I think we've learned a lot through it and you know, it's been all right. So. No. The cupboards get a daily clear out by the one year old, has it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it would it would be impossible normally to teach that, you know, what to handle all what you're handling. I think you're doing it really, really well, I'm sure. And uh, roll on the summer holidays, eh? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you though. Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, finally, do you have a positive experience or thought to share? from your experience of this whole pandemic thing? <laughs> when, you, when you look back? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel that there's been a, a, a huge amount of positives through this. I mean, that, the, whole, the whole thing has come out of a, a, a huge negative and uh, enormous trauma for the country and for, for the world. Mm -hmm. But I think that within the communities in which we live, we've seen such creativity uh, from, from pubs and, and shops, uh, diversifying to be able to look after the vulnerable and look after the communities that we live in, and people delivering things and collecting medicine for others. I, I think that the way in which the church, that to be able to do what we're doing right now is, is, a, is a really creative thing. And it's, it's not uh, not happened through um, just sort of easy channels, really. A huge amount of work has gone into it, but mm. the work has gone into it, and mm. people have done it because, uh, as a church family, it's so important to be able to stay connected and yeah. to come together to worship God. And I think that the way in which Zoom has enabled that, and and sort of other creative ways that churches have done that. Uh, has been a real, a real sort of wonder, and uh, has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we're all finding that this Zoom service has been a real blessing. You know the way we've been able to connect. Yeah. Anyway, but thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. I know you're off to another Zoom for the children shortly. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to interview you and get to know you, and we're going to get to know you more, no doubt. Yeah. So thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to and all. you. God oh, bless. Thank you, everyone. Now to our first hymn. So good morning everybody and now we'll move to our service. Hallelujah.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Gail's going to bring us our scripture reading for today. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Thank you. So in that passage, we have Matthew recording the words of Jesus. And Jesus says, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. Just hold that for a moment. Anyone who welcomes you, welcomes me. Anyone who welcomes you because you are a follower of Jesus, welcomes Jesus himself. Every time you, as a follower of Jesus, help, advise or support someone, you in effect are being Jesus to them. The welcome extended to you is a welcome to Jesus. If they offer you a cup of cold water, or more likely a cup of tea, they are offering that cup to Jesus found call to humility on our behalf as we take that in. In the July Dubber, I've written something about the Grenfell Tower tragedy of uh, three years ago. The church was there and I just want to show you a clip about the church's presence at that time and in that place. Uh, I am Graham Tomlin, I'm the Bishop of Kensington, which is uh, the part of the London Diocese in which this great tragedy has happened. Uh, and I'm here because I'm representing the whole church alongside our local clergy here, who have been doing a fantastic job just opening their hearts and homes and buildings uh, for the local community. Uh, this church here, uh, St. Clements, has been right to the heart, just around the corner from the tower block itself. Uh, it opened very early on, soon enough after the, the fire began. And um, it's been open pretty well ever since, but it's closing last night. It's been a centre for people to come here, grieving um, families, people who are uncertain about where their loved ones are, uh, to come here and find a space to talk to someone, to pray. We've had a, a prayer space here where clergy have been you know, regularly praying, being available to talk to people. Uh, the church itself is full of uh, clothing and uh, food that have been brought by the local community. So everyone is mucked in here. Everyone wants to do something, whatever faith, whatever all faith, about everything, everybody's wanting to do something. But the church has been a really real focal point to the community here. The other thing I think we can do as Christians that maybe not other, all, all others can do is that we ought to pray for people, and to give people a sense of hope, a sense that there is something bigger, something more than just the tragedy that they're facing at the moment. And I think that's why being here has been such an important thing for the church over the last couple of days. In the uh, aftermath of that tragedy, the church was in effect being Jesus to that community. 
and if we follow on from what uh, Matthew was writing in recording Jesus's words, the welcome offered to the presence of the church was in itself a welcome to the presence of Jesus. Three years ago, um, plus a week, I, I turned up um, at, at Grenfell on the, uh, the Wednesday after the tragedy. We've been told to put on our dog collars and do nothing more than be there and to walk around the community and to participate in the, 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 the conversations and any support that could be offered. The air was still acrid with the smoke from the still smouldering tower that loomed black and menacing over that grieving community. I didn't do anything except hang around. And I know I felt completely unworthy of the thanks I received from the people in that community just for being there amongst my clergy colleagues. Of course, there were many others there as well from other faith groups and humanitarian organisations, and they too were welcomed. I was welcomed as a representative of the Christian community. And amazingly, remarkably, humbly, Jesus says in this passage, when you're welcomed as a Christian, when you're welcomed as a representative of the church, when you're welcomed in Jesus' name, it's as though Jesus is being welcomed at that time and at that place. That's something to ponder on. In verse 42, Matthew writes, recalling the words of Jesus, whoever even gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Who are the little ones? Who is it that receives the reward? Well, if you look at the screen, if you've got it, if you're in um, speak of you and you can see all these uh, pictures of folks in front of you, then uh, each one of those people that you can see is counted as a little one. The little ones are you, the disciples. That's what they look like in Purbeck today. So if you could see your face there and the face of others, here are the little ones. Here are the disciples. And the one receiving the reward is not the little one. The one who receives the reward is not the disciple. The one who receives the reward is the one who gives the cup of cold water or the cup of tea to the disciple, to you, as you draw along side people within our community in acts of service, in acts of support, in acts of compassion. In doing that, you're representing Jesus to the community in and through who you are. And it's those that offer you reward. Uh, sorry, offer you the cold cup of water or the cup of tea who are receiving the ward, reward. That's not how we expect it to be. Perhaps we might anticipate that we receive some sort of reward for helping others. But that's not the way of this upside down gospel. There is no reward for us except knowing that we are a disciple of Christ, that we are those who are called to be a blessing to others. We're not in the reward seeking business or the reward receiving business. We are called to act without reward. The reward is for those who respond. The reward is those who welcome us, because in doing so, they are welcoming Jesus. The one serving the disciple is the one serving Jesus. That takes some pondering, doesn't it? What Matthew seems to be saying is that when the church is Jesus to its community, 
and the community has an opportunity to represent to welcome the church and its representatives in so doing the people of that community receive their reward in the aftermath of Grenfell there were opportunities positive opportunities for new friendship for trust for community solidarity and an overwhelming desire for justice in particular a challenge to the systemic social disadvantage that resulted in black, Asian and minority ethnic and poorer residents in wealthy Kensington and Chelsea being disproportionately victims of that fire. And that's a challenge that is still being actively pursued. I wonder, does COVID-19 offer similar challenges and opportunities within our communities? Is this the type of reward that's won when Jesus is seen and welcomed in the acts of service and compassion offered by the local church? Do I, do I wonder, our acts of service to the community within Purbeck enable people to glimpse something of the love, the challenge, the justice that Jesus embodied? Is our proud presence welcomed? as such. I do hope so, because therein lies the route to community transformation, to friendship, to peace, to justice and trust, the rewards of welcome Jesus into our shared lives. I'm going to conclude now with a prayer that many of you will know from St Anselm, a familiar prayer, but one is perhaps inspired in part by that passage from Matthew. O oh my God, teach me to be generous, teach me to serve you as I should, to give without counting the cost, to fight without the fear of being wounded, to work without seeking rest, to labour without expecting any reward, but the knowledge that I am doing your most holy will. Amen.
Let's, let us pray. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most, Most merciful God, God Father, Father of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we confess the we have sinned, sinned in thought, word and deed. deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies Cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us say the creed together. Though Jesus was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name. As at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Alison is going to bring us our intercessions. Our prayers this morning are inspired by the words of Jesus inviting us to leave our troubles with him and discover his rest. There will be short silences for your own thoughts. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord Jesus, we come to you with our burdens and varying degrees of weariness. We choose now to lay them all down at the foot of the cross and find rest. Take a moment to do this for yourself.
Father God, we pray for our world where there is so much trouble and so little peace. We pray for countries where coronavirus is spreading frighteningly, like Brazil, for countries where natural disaster is added to the crisis, remembering the Mexico earthquake, for places where overcrowding makes the idea of social distancing seem like a cruel joke, slums, favelas, refugee and displaced persons camps. Father, we identify ourselves with the exhaustion and the burdens of the world and lay them before you. In the next moments, pray for a place which comes to mind for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you now for the well-being of our country as lockdown is gradually relaxed. We've seen unwise actions and are concerned again for the NHS and for our emergency services. We know that enormous pressure still continues on medical staff, on research scientists, on government, local and national, and we know that many are so tired from months of effort. Father, we bring to you those who feel they can't go on, who are bearing burdens of stress, anxiety, fear, grief, hopelessness. Make your love known to them. Touch their lives with your grace. Pray now for them and for anyone known to you in this situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, we bring before you the need for justice and equality in society that has been brought sharply into focus recently. We confess our fault as a nation and ask for forgiveness for wrongs done both recently and in the past. Help us to learn from history guide our leaders to make wise decisions and change our hearts to be more and more like you, you who love each individual person made in your image. Help us to create a fair, just and kind society for all. The silence to reflect on this. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church, the body of Christ in this country. We ask for wisdom for leaders as they consider how to respond to the easing of lockdown, praying for Archbishop Justin as national leader, and more locally for Bishop Nicholas, Andrew and Karen. Today we pray specially for Nick, Naomi and their three children as Nick formally begins his work as curate in the benefice. Refresh them and all of us for the time ahead. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of our leaders here in Purbeck and we lift them up to you. Finally, we pray for our local community. Please protect those of us who will be in contact with increasing numbers of visitors. Help us to manage our personal concerns about how and when to meet up with others. We pray for people who are ill, suffering or in distress for anyone who's close to death and we remember those who have died asking you to wrap your arms around the ones who grieve a final pause for your prayers
Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear my, my prayer. prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that you will give us rest as we lay our cares at your feet. Merciful Father, accept Happy these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not bring us to a time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, Forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Alleluia. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. And we're going to do it in our new traditional way. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you.
And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.